Hello folks and goats, my name is Griffin and welcome to another Command Valley Deck Tech. Super glad you're here. Uh, quick reminder before we begin, if you are not already a Patreon, then head on over to patreon.com slash commandvalley and consider joining up today. You get access to tons of exclusive perks and content. Help out the show while you do so. We really appreciate all of our patrons and invite you to join. Another reminder that this episode is sponsored by GameGrid. If you are looking to get any of these cards or the full deck, we will include a deck list in the show notes where you can take it right to their website and input it into their deck builder toolkit and get those cards shipped directly to your house. We super appreciate GameGrid and thank them for sponsoring this channel. And lastly, if you enjoy this content, remember to like, comment, and subscribe and share this with your friends. Help us keep growing and get up there with all those other big content creators that are that are pretty cool. All right, goats, Cal Time is right around the corner and we are super excited to start building decks from Call Time. And the first one that we are going to be building with you today is Sarulf, Realm Eater. Apart from being the big bad wolf, Sarulf is one black and a green for a 3-3 legendary creature wolf. He reads whenever a permanent and opponent controls is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on Sarulf. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if Sarul has one or more plus one plus one counters on it, you may remove all of them. If you do, exile each other non-land permanent with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of counters removed this way. Now, if you're like me, the first thing that you thought of when you saw Sarulf is, oh my goodness, it's a three mana Eugene. Now, of course, a much cheaper and harder to get there, but Sarulf does give that exile advantage that Eugene also gives you just to let you know how powerful that effect is. Along with Eugene, this effect wipes the entire board of non-land permanents except for Sir Rolf. So this makes it very tricky on how to build this deck. So the deck I've built for you guys today, I'd like to call the Bottom End Punisher. Now the way that this deck plays is essentially all of the permanents that we have in this deck are above five mana. Now you might be thinking, whoa, hold up Griff. Five mana? You expect me to start the game by casting five mana costed permanents? Well, my friends, you are right. But what we're going to be doing for the first couple of turns is ramping and getting Sarulf out and getting counters on Sarulf and then wiping the board of all permanents below five CMC. This will essentially hinder all of our opponents with their bottom end while we ramp up to some big powerful permanent spells and overwhelm the board that way. And the first section in this deck is the ramp. The ramp is very important. All of the ramp that we've included in this deck is non-land ramp. So that means it's instants and sorceries or maybe a one-off effect from a permanent entering the battlefield. The reason why is because we don't want any permanents to be on the battlefield that are giving us an advantage when we wipe the board with our big bad wolf. So starting off, we have Far Seek, which is one in a green for a sorcery. Search your library for a plains, island, swamp, or mountain card and put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Nature's Lore, which is one or green for a sorcery. Search your library for a force card and put that card onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. Three Visits does the same thing. We've also got Rampant Growth, which is a sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card and put that card onto the battlefield tap and shuffle your library. Cultivate is two and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards and put one onto the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand and shuffle your library. Aro is two and a green for an instant as an additional cost to this spell. Sacrifice a land, search your library for up to two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. They too come in untapped, so that can be really nice, especially if you have another spell to cast after that. Kodama's Reach is two and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal those cards and put one onto the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand, then shuffle your library. Roiling Regrowth is two and a green for an instant sacrifice a land and search your library for up to two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. So a lot like Haro, uh, but they do come into the battlefield tapped. Death Sprout is one black black green for an instant. Destroy target creature and search your library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. A piece of mana ramp and also a piece of removal on the same card. Explosive Vegetation is three and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tap and shuffle your library. And then we also have Secure a Tribe Elder for a one creature, one and a green for a one one Shaman Snake. You can sacrifice them to search your library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Now after we've gone through our ramp and gotten five or six mana, we wanna play Sarulf. Now the reason why we wanna play Sarulf is we wanna get counters on him as fast as possible and start wiping the board as fast as possible. The upside to Sarulf is that he can put counters on himself just by permanence your opponent's control going into the graveyard from the battlefield. However, we can also put plus one plus one counters on him with spells, specifically spells that we can do at instant speed so that we can respond to our upkeep and give him the counters before anybody can see what's coming. 
for the one creature that's below five CMC, we've put Forgotten Ancient. Now Forgotten Ancient is three and a green for a zero three creature elemental. Whenever a player casts a spell, you may put a plus one plus one counter on Forgotten Ancient. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you may move any number of plus one plus one counters from Forgotten Ancient onto other creatures. So you play Forgotten Ancient after you've played Cerule. You wait for the turn of the table. Your opponents may cast three or four spells. Put that many counters on Forgotten Ancient on your upkeep. You can move them to Cerulf before Cerulf's trigger goes off. Now for our spells that add plus one plus one counters, we have Vastwood Fortification, which is an instant for a green that puts a plus one plus one counter on target creature that also doubles as a modal DFC land. Ancient Animus is one and a green for an instant, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control if it's legendary, then it fights target creature and opponent controls. Inscription of Abundance is one and a green for an instant with kicker two and a green. Choose one if the spell was kicked, choose any number instead. Put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. Target player gains X life, where X is the greatest power among creatures they control. And target creature you control fights another target creature you don't control. Solidarity of Heroes is one or green for an instant with Strive. This spell costs one or green more to cast for each target beyond the first. Choose any number of target creatures and double the number of plus one plus one counters on each of them. Now this doesn't necessarily give Cerulf any plus one plus one counters, but if you've got one or two on him already, then this can be really nice. Strength of the Tajiru is X green green for an instant with multi kicker one. Choose target creature, then choose another target creature for each time the spell was kicked. Put X plus one plus one counters on each of them. So for five mana, for an instant, you can put three plus one plus one counters on Cerulf on your upkeep since it's an instant, and then you can respond with Cerulf's trigger. Remove those three counters and exile each other non-land permanent with convert mana cost three or less. Subtle Strike is one and a black for an instant. Choose one or both. Target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn and put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. This can be nice to pick off some of those, you know, pesky one, one creatures on the board and also give you a plus one, plus one counter on Sir Rolf. Invigorating Surge is two and a green for an instant. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control, then double the amount of plus one, plus one counters on that creature. Life Crafter's Gift is three and a green for an instant. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Then put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Blessings of Nature is four and a green for a sorcery. Distribute four plus one, plus one counters among any number of target creatures. And you can also miracle it for one green. Again, the downside to it is that it is a sorcery. So you can't do it at instant speed and surprise your opponents. We really want to focus on instant so that we don't dump a bunch of plus one, plus one counters on Sorolf and have our opponents want to get rid of him before it comes back to our upkeep. Soul's Might is four and a green for a sorcery. Put X plus one plus one counters on target creature where X is that creature's power. Stand Together is an instant, which is three green green. Put two plus one plus one counters on target creature and two plus one plus one counters on another target creature. Decree of Savagery is an instant for seven green green and it puts four plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. But you can also cycle it for four green green and when you cycle Decree of Savagery, you may put four plus one plus one counters on target creature. Now this is a very high mana cost for this effect, but the reason why we put it in here is because we really want those instant speed counters. And since we can cycle this for six instead of paying nine for it, we can get away with just putting those counters on Cerulf. Now that we've put counters on Cerulf, we've maybe wiped the board a couple of times. Now we want to play our big creatures. Again, we don't have any non-land permanents in this deck that aren't below five mana, bar two of them that might give us some effect. But most of the things that we have in this deck are above five mana so that we can keep wiping the board with four mana costs and below, get rid of everybody's ramp pieces, everybody's utility creatures, and then play our big creatures. So this next section is the big powerful creatures and spells that we can cast to overwhelm the board. For our creatures, we've got Arcfiend of Depravity, which is three black black for a flying demon at the beginning of each opponent's end step. That player chooses up to two creatures he or she controls and sacrifices the rest. This is really nice to help us control the board even without Cerule if we really want that redundancy. Ashaya Soul of the Wild is three green green for a legendary creature elemental. Ashaya Soul of the Wild's power and toughness are equal are each equal to the number of lands you control, and non-token creatures you control are forest lands in addition to their other types. Ashaya might be the most important card in this deck. He makes all of our creatures also forest, which means they are lands, which means Sir Rolf will not exile them if they are lands, because Sir Rolf's text says that you exile each non-land permanent. So with Cerulf and Ashaya out, you can put as many counters as you want on Cerulf and exile each other permanent with, you know, maybe you can get eight plus one plus one counters on it and wipe the board for each converted mana cost eight or less. Elder Gargroth is three green green for a Vigilance Reach Trample Beast and whenever he attacks or blocks, choose one. Create a three three green beast creature token, you gain three life or you draw a card. 
Verdurous Gear Hulk is 3 green green for an artifact creature construct. With Trample, and when he enters the battlefield, distribute 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters among any number of target creatures you control. This is really nice because we can do some more redundancy on Sir Rulf. And on our upkeep, we can remove those 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and Verdurous Gear Hulk will stick around. Demon Lord Bells and Lock is 4 black black for a legendary creature Demon Elder. With Flying and Trample, when he enters the battlefield, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non land card. Then put that card into your hand. If the card's converted mana cost is 4 or greater, repeat this process. Demon Lord Bells and Lock deals 1 damage to you for each card put into your hand this way. This is going to be really nice pseudo card draw that's also on a 6 6 flampling body. McKay's the Unhollowed is 3 black 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 for a legendary creature cleric zombie with intimidate. Whenever a human deals damage to you, destroy it. And other non human creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 and have Undying. Soul of the Harvest is 4 green green for a elemental with trample. And whenever another non token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. Tetsamok Primal Death is 4 black black for a legendary creature dinosaur elder with death touch. And for one black, you can reveal Tetsamok from your hand and put a prey counter on target creature. Activate this ability only during your turn. And when Tetsamok enters the battlefield, destroy each creature your opponent's control with a plurry counter on it. Now before I continue, something that is very important in this deck. With Tetsamok, notice that removal ability on him because that's going to be very pertinent later in this deck tech. Crick Son of Yogmoth is 4 and 3 Phyrexian black mana. He has lifelink, and for each black symbol and a cost, you may pay 2 life rather than pay that mana. And whenever you cast a black spell, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Crick, son of Yogmoth. Nyxbloom Ancient is 4 green 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 for a 5-5 five, five creature enchantment elemental with trample, and if you would tap a permanent for mana, it produces 3 times as much of that mana instead. Just an auto include in every green deck from now until the rest of time. Runescar Demon is 5 black black for a flying 6-6 six, six demon, and when he enters the battlefield, search your library for a card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Shieldred Whispering One is 5 black black for a legendary creature Praetor. With Swamp Walk, and at the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. Arcfiend of Despair is 6 black black for a 6-6 six, six flying demon. Your opponents can't gain life, and at the beginning of each end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life that player lost this turn. Terracidon is 6 green green for a 9 9 elephant, and when he enters the battlefield, you may destroy up to 3 target non creature permanents. For each permanent put into a graveyard this way, its controller creates a 3 3 green elephant creature token. Villas Broker of Blood is 5 black 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 for a legendary creature 8 8 demon with flying, and for a black, you can pay 2 life. Target creature gets minus 1 minus 1 until end of turn, but the real text whenever you lose life, draw that many cards. Second to last, we have Vorniclex Vorse of Hunger, which is 6 green green for a legendary creature Praetor, with Trample, and whenever you tap a land for mana, add 1 mana of any type that land produced. And whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, that land doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. And then lastly, we have Woodfall Primus, which is 5 green 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 for a 6-6 six, six, Trampling Shaman Tree Folk, and when he enters the battlefield, destroy a target non-creature permanent, and he also has Persist. For our powerful non-creature spells, we have Ingaruk's Wake, which is a sorcery for 7 black black. Destroy all creatures you don't control and all planeswalkers you don't control. We also have Plague Wind, which is also 7 black black for a sorcery. Destroy all creatures you don't control. They can't be regenerated. With step 3 accomplished, we have some big beaters out. We've wiped the board a couple of times, keeping that low end punished. Now we've got to control the board on the top end. Our opponents are still going to be able to cast creatures with higher than 5 converted mana cost. So although we do have Plague Wind and Ingrook's Wake, we need to be able to control the board and make sure that our creatures are the most powerful out there so that we can steal, so we can take the win. So in our removal package, apart from a lot of the creatures, which are also counting as removal, we have Tragic Slip, which is 1 black for an instant. Target creature gets minus 1, minus 1 till end of turn but it also has Morbid. That creature gets minus 13, minus 13 until end of turn if it, instead if a creature died this turn. Assassin's Trophy is black and a green for an instant. Destroy target permanent and opponent controls. Its controller may search their library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle their library. Feed the Swarm is one and a green for a sorcery. Destroy target creature or enchantment opponent controls. You lose life equal to that permanent's converted mana cost. Heartless Act is 1 in a black for an instant choose 1, destroy target creature with no counters on it, or remove up to 3 counters from target creature. Beast Within is 2 in a green for an instant destroy target permanent, its controller creates a 3-3 green beast creature token. Putrefy is 1 black in a green for an instant destroy target artifact or creature, it can't be regenerated. 
Casualties of War is two black black green green for a sorcery. Choose one or more. Destroy target artifact, target creature, target enchantment, target land, and target planeswalker. And then along with that, we have Pernicious Deed, which is one black green for an enchantment. And for X, sacrifice Pernicious Deed, destroy each artifact, creature, and enchantment with converted mana cost X or less. So this can be really nice if our opponents have killed Saruf a couple of times, we don't have enough to cast him again. Just play Pernicious Deed and we do the work. Those spells, in addition to our creatures, can assure that we control the board from our opponent's creatures, artifacts, and enchantments that are above 5 CMC and assure that we are the strongest player at the table while using Sirulf to also keep punishing that low end. And before you know it, you are a control deck in Golgari. But then again, Aristocrats is basically control, right? All right, lastly, in this deck, we're going to talk about the card draw, because along with mana ramp, card draw is also very important to make sure that our hand stays full, make sure that we are still a f we still have a fighting chance in every part of this game. But before that, the second to last thing we will need with Sir Wolf is protection for him. This is a this is a pretty small section. However, it's very important that we have low mana cost spells that protect Sir Wolf from our opponent's kill spells because Sir Wolf will definitely be targeted. So in this section, we have Veil of Summer, which is one in a, which is one green for an instant draw card if an opponent has cast a blue or black spell this turn. Spells you control can't be countered this turn. You and permanents you control gain hexproof from blue and from black until end of turn. Vines of Vastwood is one green for an instant with kicker for a green. Tar creature can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control this turn. And if it was kicked, that creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. And then we have Heroic Intervention, which is one and a green for an instant permanent to control, gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Now, there are a couple more protection spells that you could put in this deck. I've only put these three. The reason why is because I'm banking on the fact that we have a lot of instant spells that can put plus one plus one counters on Sir Rolf, so we won't necessarily need to protect him as long as our opponents don't see our plan coming. Now, the last thing that we're going to need in this deck is card draw, because along with mana ramp, we need card draw in our deck to make sure that we always have a full hand and a fighting chance during every part of the game. For our card draw package, we have Return of the Wild Speaker, which is four and a green for an instant. Choose one, draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, or non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus three until end of turn. Soul's Majesty is four and a green for a sorcery. Draw cards equal to the power of target creature you control. Vristkar's Expertise is four green, green for a sorcery. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control, and you may cast a card with convert mana cost five or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. The Great Henge is seven green, green for a legendary artifact. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power Power among creatures you control. Tap to add two green, you gain two life, and whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card. Zendikar Resurgent is five green green for an enchantment. Whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana to your mana pool of any type that land produced, and whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. All right, my friends, thanks for staying to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this deck tech for Sir Rolf Realm Eater. If you would like to see a full deck list, check out the list in the show notes below. And if you would like to see this deck in action, please let us know in the comments that you would like to see this deck in one of our gameplay videos. It helps us know what decks you guys want to see. And definitely let us know of any other includes that you would put in this deck or how you've built a Sir Rolf Realm Eater deck tech. And without further ado, that is the first Kaldheim deck tech with many more on the way. So please stay tuned on our channel for all the new Caltime spoilers and deck techs that will be released. We appreciate you all, invite you to like, subscribe, and comment on this video, and we will see you next time for our next Caltime deck tech.